Hey, good morning, everyone. Trust everyone's having a good day. We're going to jump right into the devotion. Today's devotion is called Stay Focused. Um, this is coming from uh, the message that the Lord allowed us to preach on Sunday out of Second Chronicles in chapter 20 on Jehoshaphat. And we looked at it from the principle of a prayer uh, and the fact that the beginning of the prayer was um, all about God and who he is. Um, you know, and then the last couple verses of the prayer, he says, oh, yeah, here's our problem. Uh, and, and we kind of talked about how that so many times, of course, if you wasn't there, if you haven't been able to see it uh, in Jeho Jehoshaphat 20, uh, a group of people come, uh, actually three uh, nations come against uh, Jehoshaphat, who is king of Judah, and they're about 15 miles away. Um, to attack and they come to tell Jehoshaphat that he calls for a fast and uh, they they fast as a nation uh, and he leads them in prayer and and we looked at the prayer and so uh, we, we entitled it confronting crisis and um, we we mentioned a little bit but the thing I want to talk a little bit more about today is staying um, focus and, and why why does God allow crisis or as some people would say does God allow crisis and yes he does um, we see one and read one about here but now also people would be able to say you know floods came and all this stuff here and it was God's judgment maybe it is maybe it's not um, it can be but regardless of the reason for the crisis God does send them I believe that, but he wants us to be focused on him. But we'll look at that here in a little bit. Second Chronicles 20 and 17 says, Ye shall not need to fight. Now, this is um, when the church, when the when they've gathered together and they're there outside the court, and um, Jehoshaphat is going to pray, and then someone stands up, and um, I think it's Jehu. Uh, stands up and uh, in the spirit, and, and this is what he tells Jehoshaphat. He says, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Um, and so when we look at this, we think, well, wh why did this all happen? Um, they were going to be under attack. Not just one nation, not two nations, but three nations was coming against them. Um, this would definitely fit the bill of a crisis. And we read, if you go on before that, Jehoshaphat when, in his prayer says, you know, we don't have the power to do this. And, and you know, we don't have the answers for this problem. Um, so then... Now we see here that God's um, sent the word that they're not even going to have to fight. And they're worshiping before, which is a whole other um, sermon as well, which we touched on a little bit. But uh, the faith in, in, in the word of God that God's going to deliver um, and worship in him before he does answer the prayer. Um, but a couple questions we want to look at. Why does God allow crisis? And, and God does allow crisis. Um, you know, again, not every crisis is uh, directly from the hand of God. Um, you know, when it floods, sometimes that might be on the location of where you live is the reason it floods. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes heartache may come and invade the family and you didn't have nothing to do with this. Um, you know, that's the same thing here with Jehoshaphat. He's unlike his father. He's walking in the ways of the Lord. You know, he'd highlight some of his faults and failures, but he set his heart toward the Lord. He he was seeking the Lord, and we talked about that. Um, but the purpose of crisis, when when things come to our life, regardless of how they get here, who who why and the what's of it does not it, it matters, but not for the sake of this. The fact is, you're in a crisis. You're in a battle. Uh, something has invaded. You're dealing with something. Why? Uh, and brother Ron, when he was talking about his, he was talking about how you know, 
can be a two-year-old and be distracted and this, that, and the other. And, and when he was talking about that, I was actually listening to it. Um, and and to, the picture came to my mind is, is taking a picture of a kid. Um, and, and I think about my uh, niece's little boy, Nixon. He does not like to get his picture made. Um, he, he gets it made a lot, but he doesn't like it. And so we're all standing behind the phone or the camera or whatever else, making the faces and snapping and trying to draw his attention, say, hey, you know, look right here and distract all the distractions around him. But look at us. Look at us and look at this. We're going to get your picture made. And I think it's a lot of time the, what God's doing. Um, you know, we look around at all the, the, the things that's going on in the world and everything else. And God's kind of giving us that snap like, hey, you know, focus here, focus on me. Um and, and that's the, the, that's to me is 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 one of the things that God spoke to me about in this story here of Jehoshaphat. That all these things that was going around, Jehoshaphat gives us the example of what we're to do. You know, he didn't send the generals out to scout out how close are they. He didn't start positioning the military. He had the power to do all those things, but he put his face and he set his face toward God. So when the crisis come our way, that's what we need to do. Because in the purpose of that, and, and then the crisis and whatever it is that we're facing, the reason is so that God can demonstrate that he is God alone. See, 80 some percent of the people of the world say they believe in God. All right. To me, I think that's a head knowledge of God. God didn't send his son to die on the cross for our sins for us to have a head knowledge of him. It's one thing to know of God. It's a whole new thing to know the power of the living God. And so a lot of times when crisis comes our way, that's the purpose. He wants us to know and trust in his power, the living power. And he'll use these circumstances to show us who he is so we can know him better. Because when you scratch it all around, all of what, scratch it all the way, peel it down to the core. The core of it is this. Christ wants to know us. And he wants us to know him completely. Uh, and we know that in, on this side of eternity, in our sinful state, we're only going to be able to know him on a limited basis. But remember, this is just a stepping stone for the real deal. And that's when we all get to heaven and we'll be able to, and, you know, but we have to know him and the power of him here on this earth to be able to spend eternity with him. That's the purpose. That's why sometimes we have to go through crisis because he wants us to focus not on everything that's going around but on him and trust in his power. So I pray this morning you have a great day, a blessed day. We love you and we look forward to seeing you real soon.